Good afternoon. Welcome to the March 9th meeting of Hardin County Fiscal Court. I'd remind you this is a voting meeting, and if you have cell phones, please turn them off or put them in vibrate mode. We'll begin with a roll call, if you would, Ms. Donnelly. Ronnie Goodman. Here. King. Here. Judge Berry. Here. Easter. Here. Doug Goodman. Here. Williams. Here. Clem. Here. Wiseman. Here. Thompson. Here. Mr. Thompson will lead us in the invocation of Mr. King in the pledge, if you'll please stand. <clears throat> Would you join me in a prayer? <clears throat> Father God, uh, we are thankful today that uh, you're in control, that you have authority, and uh, you know our very uh, wants, desires, and needs, and uh, you, you know every hair on our head, Lord. We thank you for your uh, omniscience. We <coughs> pray, Father, that as we meet today, um, you would uh, send your Holy Spirit to allow us to be able to uh, make decisions that would be uh, best for the community that we serve here. Lord, we thank you uh, that uh, you've sent your son Jesus that we might know you as uh, Lord and uh, Savior and as our Father, God. Uh, we pray, Lord, that uh, you guide our thoughts, you guide our actions, and that you be glorified uh, through our work today in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you please join me in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First today, with informational items, we have two reports today, uh, annual presentations from the two water districts. First up is district number one's uh, annual presentation. We have Mr. Stephen Hogan, general manager. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, yes, I'm Stephen Hogan, general manager for Hardin County Water District One. Uh, we'll jump right into it. Uh, it's been an unusual year for all of us. Um, a lot of things changed, uh, some things didn't, so you'll see some of the similar items uh, from last year. So some of the board actions we had, uh, we did have one re uh, employee retire earlier uh, in the year, uh, Michael McKinney, uh, he had 24 years of service with us. He was one of our uh, award-winning uh, plant operators at Myrtle Spring. <coughs> Uh, we did complete construction of the two million and a half gallon elevated water storage tanks at Fort Knox. Uh, it took us about a year, even through uh, challenges and uh, issues with COVID. They are standing, they are in the air, but they are not occupied. We still have to build the water plant pumps to uh, bigger so we can fill the uh, uh, fill the tanks. <clears throat> I did want to show you something that was interesting. We have a small video clip of how the bowl gets to the top. Uh, this is the Estrada tank. Uh, it took about two hours to raise the, uh, the steel bowl which was constructed on the bottom and lifted to the top in place. Uh, that bowl weighs uh, a whole lot. Let's just do <laughs> that. But it was amazing at the technology and the mechanics that they used to, to raise, uh, raise it to the top. Once it was up, they welded it in place and poured the concrete floor to, to anchor it up there. Uh, funny, uh, funny story, when uh, Fifth Corps shows up at Fort Knox, they want to add a logo to, the, to that tower. How long will it take you to bring it back down so we can paint it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, sorry guys, it's a little ways to <laughs> Sorry guys, it's there. Right? It's there, it's already there. A couple of the uh, personnel items uh, were added to our, uh, our, our board took care of a couple of personnel policies, uh, new succession policy, computer use, and some employee travel policies. And going on to our system, uh, our capital improvements and our uh, capital purchases, last year we completed $10,324,000 <coughs> worth of work despite COVID. Uh, that was a pretty, pretty significant challenge. Uh, in our Fort Knox water uh, uh, 
uh, capital improvement plan, we had the uh, two tanks, which you see are five million five hundred fifty-five thousand, was was for both of those tanks. Uh, this year, going forward, we have started the construction for uh, the Muldraw water treatment plant, which is on post. Uh, that's in the range of fifteen million dollars. And quite honestly, the nineteen forty-one plant was a juggernaut, but. Uh, now it looks like a bombed out mess. It's been completely gutted. The only thing that remains are the structures. So we have one project over at uh, the Radcliffe Wastewater. Uh, we had uh, three projects in the excess of $2 million at Fort Knox Wastewater. That's the plants we were, we were working on. And Fort Knox Stormwater, we had $300,000 worth of work. So this year, in progress, including uh, the Muldraw plant, we have $23 million worth of work going on, and we do plan to complete that this year. It'll be a challenge, but we will complete those this year. Uh, under design, we have three projects, and it's shy of a million dollars. Uh, Radcliffe, uh, right around $800,000. Uh, Fort Knox Water, uh, we have six small, oh, I'm sorry, wastewater. We have six small sewer line projects uh, these are replacements to uh, the aged buildings and that kind of thing out there. Uh, and then the Fort Knox uh, stormwater, we're replacing a box culvert for about $45,000. So we also have some water lines at Fort Knox that we'll be replacing, the old cast iron uh, pipes that have been in the ground since 19-0-whatever. Um, we had a challenge this last uh, cold snap. Uh, at one time we had nine breaks going on at one time. It started about 11 o'clock at night and went on until about 2 o'clock the next morning. Uh, the crews were out there. At one point in time, we were having trouble keeping the, the tanks full. It was draining so much water out uh, so quickly. Moving on to our, our uh, standards of excellence, we have a few awards this year. Again, our uh, associations did not meet. It was hard to meet in person, uh, but we were uh, fortunate to have uh, the wastewater system at uh, Radcliffe uh, awarded the uh, operation, uh, Outstanding Operations Award by KWWOA. And we had uh, the Clean Water Professionals, or formerly known as WEF, uh, uh, grant Operational Excellence Award for the Fort Knox Wastewater uh, Treatment Facility. And again this year, for the third year in a row, the Kentucky Chamber of Commerce has awarded us the uh, one of the best places to work in the state of Kentucky. Uh, we did receive uh, Moody's surveillance report. That's our credit rating, and we're still very good at AA3. So moving on, uh, COVID-19 impacts. What, uh, how did we operate? Well, I'm, I'm here to tell you we didn't stop. We, we kept <laughs> going. We met the challenges. We had all personnel in-house or uh, in, uh, uh, in our facilities. But as usual, according to the CDC guidelines, we did start doing temperature checks and cleaning and, and the like. Uh, and we still have our lobby closed. We're just not quite ready to, to face the challenge of having the public come in to, uh, to the facility. Uh, <coughs> the idea of the personnel impacts, we had 28 employees that in some way, shape, form, or fashion uh, had to take uh, COVID leave under the CARES Act. And uh, thanks to my counterpart, we had to check some numbers. Uh, it's showing 520 hours. That actually should be 934 hours. And the emergency paid leave dollar amount should be $22,908. Uh, but all in all, uh, we only had, uh, I think it was 12 that actually contracted uh, COVID, myself included. Um, so we were able to manage pretty well by keeping our distance, keeping our facilities isolated. Um, we curtailed or prevented any kind of commingling between the different facilities. So you're in your isolation point, you're in your isolation point, and you're over here. Don't, don't come together, you stay <laughs> over there. So we were able to manage pretty well. So as mentioned before, we were able to maintain operations. We had no significant <clears throat> downtime uh, of our plants. Uh, as usual, we did have to, as many others, I'm sorry, did have to adjust our work hours. Uh, currently our uh, uh, lobby or, 
I'm not sorry, I'm sorry, not lobby, the drive through is open 8.30 to 4. We had to do that to help out with child care early and late. So we compressed our hours to allow the folks in the front office to, to do their jobs and still take care of their uh, families. And currently we're still not allowing outside visitors uh, unless you make an appointment, but we will entertain uh, visitors and actually we look forward to them sometimes just to see different faces. So looking at our uh, financial impacts as well, uh, as you may be aware, March 16th, the uh, PSC uh, sent an order, uh, that's uh, 00085, that stopped us from disconnecting uh, customers for non-payment, which we were already considering uh, the issue uh, just because of our, our known uh, customers. So we set up a program when the order was lifted at the direction of the Public Service Commission <laughs> to allow us to put those behind on a payment plan, 6, 12, up to 24 months, in a way to help ease back into making payments. Hopefully everyone was able to resume work or otherwise uh, obtain some sort of financial uh, assistance. Uh, we were able to work with Team Kentucky Fund to help some of our clients, some of our customers, uh, but there are still folks out there that could use some help. Uh, to give you an idea, uh, we have approximately 11,000 total customers uh, in our system. About uh, at the lifting of the order in October, there were 1,278 that were in arrears from that period of time, so roughly 10%. As we started our uh, uh, social media and our public service campaign and trying to get people to start paying their bills or let them know that we would work with them, uh, we dropped that number from uh, 1278 immediately to 1185. So roughly 100 customers were able to, to take care of their situations. By November, uh, after we started cutoffs, after we actually had people say that we didn't think you were serious that we would cut you off, but unfortunately, as, as we have to, we, we need some sort of impetus to encourage you to pay your bill. We dropped that number to 889 customers um, that actually had delinquent accounts. So that all adds up to somewhere around a quarter of a million dollars in only user fees. That's just outstanding uh, for what people have used water but have not paid. So as of, uh, there again, as of November, we started with nearly a quarter million dollars, but as of today, 85, roughly $85,000 of that has been paid in full, which is fortunate. Uh, we have 114,000 and some change that are on payment plans, which will be paid over the next roughly 12 months, sometimes six, mostly 12. And then, uh, we have 45,000 that is in collections. What we found is that several people have left town, skipped town if you would, uh, not paid their bill or disappeared. We can't find them. So that's in the order of $45,000. So all total, uh, loss revenue is somewhere in the order of $533,000. Uh, that's made up of about $20,000 of uh, PPE, signage, masks, cleaners that we were uh, encouraged to purchase. And then uh, the COVID-19 emergency paid leave, that number actually should be $22,000 and we'll correct that. But to date, we've not received anything from the federal uh, acts or any of the federal government aid. Uh, we did receive a, a, a payment from the county. Uh, thank you, Judge Barry, for entertaining that through, through the FEMA funds and such. We, we do greatly appreciate that. But all told, we're somewhere in the order of half a million dollars uh, impact as far as the district goes. Looking at our budget, uh, for 2021, you see the numbers there for, uh, uh, that the board has approved. Um, let me flip pages here. So on the consolidated fund uh, line, uh, you can see we have a total of uh, 37,535,449 showing 
uh, with about uh, 19 million as estimated revenues. Now that's hoping we have a good year this year or at least a normal year. Uh, we would still be in somewhat of a recovery mode uh, and we're optimistic with those numbers. Uh, our budget breaks down with uh, $16 million as operations. Um, you, you see the numbers there. 33% of that is uh, shown as wages and benefits and retirements. Um, the next largest is 29%, which is uh, depreciation. And if you'll notice down in the little light blue at the bottom, 17% of this uh, operation budget is purchased water. Uh, we are purchasing water from District 2 as well as from Louisville Water in order to meet our demands. Uh, looking at the operating revenues, uh, you'll see there that uh, Fort Knox presents about 17% of our revenue. Uh, our metered water is 35. Metered sewer is somewhere on the order of 19. And Fort Knox water is 23%. Uh, Uh, if there are any questions, uh, I'll be glad to entertain them. Anyone have any questions for Stephen? Well, as we appreciate the great job you're doing. I know Very it's challenging good. at times, yeah. especially with the, the virus, trying to cope with that uh, it, along it the way. It was. It was very challenging, very personal. Uh, I, I contracted COVID. I actually lost my mom to, to COVID. So it's very personal, very, very yeah. widespread and reaching. But... Uh, as I'm sure Sean will indicate, we never stopped. We, we kept it all going. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Water District Number Two. We have Sean Yorvich, and he's backed up by the chairman of their board, Brother Bell. <laughs> okay. Good afternoon, uh, Judge Barry, members of the court. Uh, thank you for having us here this afternoon. And Again, for those who don't, who don't know me, I'm Sean Yurovich, and yes, I have uh, uh, Mike Bell, our chairman here, uh, for backup today. Um, last year, I was uh, here representing the district as the uh, operations manager, and uh, in uh, April of this past year, the, uh, our board of commissioners appointed me as uh, general manager. Um, just a little background on myself. Uh, I was born and raised here in Hardin County. Uh, went to uh, uh, Hardin County Schools. In fact, I think uh, Magistrate King would uh, say, testify that I was probably the best student that you've had in school. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll move on. Uh, <laughs> so, I uh, lived here in Hardin County all my life, uh, except for the four years I attended uh, Western Kentucky University, where I received uh, a bachelor, bachelor's degree. Uh, shortly after uh, uh, my attendance at Western, uh, started uh, my career at uh, the Water District, so that was a little over 29 years ago, and uh, I'm proud to be part of the district and certainly honored to be here representing them today. Um, so what I plan to uh, present today is uh, I wanted to, I guess, share with you the, our, the impacts that COVID had on uh, District 2, give you a little update on our projects, uh, a brief overview of our uh, budget, and then uh, talk a little bit about uh, our community involvement uh, over the past year. So to start with COVID, um, uh, as with most uh, businesses and uh, throughout, uh, we closed our lobby uh, early on uh, just to prevent the face-to-face uh, uh, -face interaction to help protect our employees. And uh, we uh, uh, f uh, moved or asked those, those customers that typically would come into the lobby, we just asked them to go through our drive through or, or uh, take care of the services through uh, our website. And uh, so any transaction that could be done uh, in our lobby, uh, actually before COVID, we had the ability to do, to do those transactions, conduct those transactions either through drive through or uh, online. Um, we had, uh, as uh, Stephen mentioned, the uh, Public Service Commission uh, issued an order uh, uh, moratorium on disconnects and penalties for uh, uh, disconnects or, or for uh, uh, disconnects of uh, accounts that were past due. And uh, at the uh, end of the moratorium, which was around October, we had a little over 2,000 uh, accounts that were uh, delinquent. Uh, as far as our day-to-day -day operations, our workload was not affected. You know, work can, workload continued and uh, we didn't stop or delay any projects. 
and uh, we did alter the uh, responsibility of some of our employees. In fact, those who would typically be doing uh, connects and disconnects for non-payment, uh, we just refocused uh, some of their efforts, uh, which gave us an opportunity to kind of catch up on some uh, maintenance items. So that kind of worked out pretty good. Uh, as far as staffing challenges, uh, of course, uh, you know, even without COVID, you typically have some staffing challenges, but uh, COVID certainly uh, uh, threw a little extra challenges in there for us this past year. Uh, we did have uh, half of our office staff uh, alternate working from home and then uh, in, in the office and then working from home. Uh, we did staggered shifts for uh, a lot of our field crews, uh, staggered their lunches just to make sure that uh, they weren't congregating all together at the office at the same time. Uh, made sure that they, uh, we tried to keep them separated as much as possible out in the field. Uh, of course, our plant operators, you know, uh, wasn't much we could do there other than follow CDC guidelines and uh, uh, make sure that they uh, stayed safe. Uh, we did have uh, about 46 employees who had to uh, take advantage of the uh, Emergency, emergency uh, Family Medical Leave Act, um, which, uh, you know, 5,500 hours worth, which is equivalent to about two uh, full-time employees. Uh, as far as the financial uh, impacts that COVID had, uh, we did experience about uh, six to seven thousand dollars in uh, additional expense for material items such as the mask and plexiglass and disinfectant <coughs> things of that nature. Uh, most of that, which was reimbursed uh, through the uh, county, so we, we appreciate that. Uh, due to the 5,500 hours of uh, EFMLA or uh, COVID time that employees took, that was about a hundred thousand dollar expense. Of course, that was an expense that we would have had anyway, uh, but we just weren't able to take advantage of those hours that uh, we missed out on. As far as lost revenue, uh, we estimated about $1.3 million uh, lost in water sales, and that was due to the uh, industries that were shut down for a period of time, uh, as well as uh, some, you know, many of the commercial businesses that were shut down. Uh, we did see a little uptick in our residential sales, but no, nothing close uh, to being able to compensate for what we lost in industrial and commercial sales. Uh, there was an additional $340,000 in fees that were directly related to the uh, uh, PSC <coughs> order uh, that we lost out on. And then there's about $400,000 uh, in fees that we have been able to, uh, have not been able to collect. And uh, in fact, the, at the, when the moratorium was lifted, when PSC lifted their order in October, as I mentioned, there was about a little over 2,000 accounts that were delinquent at the time. Uh, that was equivalent to about 1.6 million uh, in sales uh, that uh, we were unable to collect for uh, water sales. Um, however, our staff uh, made a great effort to contact each one of the uh, account holders um, uh, through phone calls, multiple phone calls, through emails, uh, through uh, uh, door hangers, and, and letters, and they were able to collect about 1.2 million of that uh, uh, 1.6. So uh, their efforts uh, were certainly uh, um, worth uh, worth doing. So moving on to our uh, projects, uh, as I mentioned, uh, work didn't slow down for us. Um, you know, we kept going. And in fact, uh, if you look at our meter sales for the year, uh, for 2020, we sold 433 new meters. And compared to the, the two previous years, that's nearly double what we did the two previous years, uh, each of the two previous years. So I think that's a good indication of the amount of uh, work that's uh, construction that's being done uh, throughout the county, specifically within our service territory. Uh, as far as uh, development projects, we had uh, we currently have about 12 developments that we're working with. And uh, that's everything from, you know, we, we start in with, with the developer from the early stage of design uh, through a plan or planning, through design, construction, and then until the uh, uh, water services or water infrastructure is in service. Um, many of those uh, 12 that are in progress, progress now, we started uh, last year. Uh, we did complete nine uh, developments last year, and those were commercial uh, and residential uh, developments. Those nine developments that were completed uh, was equivalent to about 400 new uh, residential lots within uh, our service area. 
uh, projects at our treatment plants. So we completed a $200,000 project at our White Mills facility, uh, which was a complete exterior upgrade or uh, rehab, I should say, a uh, complete painting and uh, the exterior. Uh, the year prior, as we reported last year, was the interior, which was about a $1.5 million project. Uh, so the two projects together, we have uh, our plant at White Mills now looks like a, a brand new facility, uh, both inside and out. Uh, we have a project right now that's underway at our City Springs uh, treatment facility, a uh, $1.9 million project uh, uh, that replaces uh, our uh, raw water um, uh, station, uh, pumping station. It's actually replacing infrastructure that was constructed back in the late 1800s. And uh, we're about to wrap that project up. In fact, uh, we expect it to go online uh, next week. <coughs> As far as uh, in our distribution collections area, uh, we have uh, a few projects there that we're working on. Uh, Mir Miracle Mile replacement project. We actually brought this up last year, but uh, uh, planning has been or design has been delayed due to the uh, work that the state is doing on uh, Dixie Highway. But uh, this this plan uh, project uh, will replace a little over a mile worth of uh, infrastructure that was installed. Um, in the 50s and that uh, we've started to have some troubles out of um, as far as uh, needing repairs and a lot of it has been covered up over the years or filled in over top so some of it's very deep and uh, so our intent is to replace a section of Maine on Dixie Highway that would stretch from Fort Florida north up past uh, uh, Lowe's and Walmart. Uh, we also have a downtown tank, what we're calling a downtown tank project which is about a four and a half million dollar project and uh, this project is, uh, will, will construct a new tank to replace two uh, aging tanks in our downtown system. Uh, we've, spent, we've been working on this project for a while now, uh, just trying, you know, it took us a while to find a location uh, to construct the tank, but we've actually uh, been able to work something out with the Elizabethtown Independent School System, and this tank will be constructed on the grounds of the Elizabethtown High School. Uh, included with that project is a 12-inch uh, transmission main that will, uh, that will be put in basically from the tank or close to the tank um, uh, on Mulberry, down Dixie Highway, uh, up to the hospital. Uh, I'm, I have Glendale Sewer on, on the screen here. Uh, last year we reported that we were uh, operating that system now, and uh, so we've been operating the Glendale Sewer system a little over a year uh, and uh, have not had any issues. Uh, we've added a few customers. Uh, we still have a little bit of the grant money left, and uh, we're currently working on uh, extending uh, some of the collection system uh, with that money uh, using our in-house uh, crews uh, to do so. Uh, one of the uh, major accomplishments we did this past year was uh, change our billing software. Uh, we went to a new software called Unilink, and this was no uh, easy task. It was. Uh, uh, it took quite a bit of our staff, office staff, a lot of data that had to be transferred. In fact, years of uh, data for over 29,000 water accounts and over 14,000 sewer accounts. So there was a lot of time involved in uh, reviewing data, data, fixing data, and then uh, testing the system. The, uh, this project uh, will allow for um, improvements for our customers on the uh, customer portal side. Uh, it also uh, is going to allow us to integrate with some of our other software. And, uh, but uh, we did the transition uh, late uh, last year, and uh, the, our customers uh, fortunately did not see, um, uh, there was very little effects from the transition. Of course, there were some who had to uh, uh, reset their account on the, on the uh, web portal, and there were some that had to uh, uh, reset up their automatic uh, payments from the bank, but uh, we knew that going in, there wasn't any way around it, uh, but uh, fortunately there was, there was very few. And then there's our, uh, what is called our 1951 West Park Road Project, which um, was formerly known as uh, 315 Green Road Project. Uh, last year we reported that uh, we had purchased 23 acres across from our existing uh, customer service facility, uh, which is the old Remington building. Uh, with the original thought of uh, remodeling, remodeling the old Remington building and uh, using that as our new customer center, service center. 
Uh, however, plans have changed, and uh, we since uh, have divided the property. Uh, we we uh, broke off about 10 acres of the uh, frontage that fronts the Ring Road that also has the uh, Old Remington building. We sold that to uh, Dan Powers Motorsports, and then we took the remaining 13 acres in the back of the uh, uh, property and began construction on uh, our new office complex. Uh, in fact, uh, on the screen now is a, a architect's re uh, rendition of what the, the building will look like. Um, so construction has started. Uh, this is an area of the uh, project. And uh, you can see that we already have our warehouse uh, under roof. And then uh, they, they were currently working on the footers for the uh, office uh, building and the shop uh, portion. Uh, project, uh, we're working with uh, Jenkins Essex uh, on this project as a design build. Uh, the project, the construction itself, has an $8 million um, estimate. And uh, our intent is to be in this location. Uh, well, substantial completion is, is slated for uh, the end of January of uh, 2022. So, uh, briefly on our, our budget. Uh, you can see that uh, we have uh, what we, uh, our expenses and uh, revenue for 2020, which is an un unaudited numbers, and then what we have expect or what we're expecting for 2021. So for capital projects uh, for last year, we spent a little over uh, $3.6 million. And then we have budgeted for 2021 about $14.6 million for capital projects. Uh, Budgeted for capital items, uh, last year we spent 222000 and we budgeted 165000 for this year. Uh, revenues uh, for last year, $14.8 million, uh, which was uh, less than, about a million and a half less than what we were expecting, and specifically uh, mainly due to the COVID. Uh, revenues for 2021, we have budgeted at $14.9 million. Uh, expenses, total expenses uh, for last year were about 12.6 million, 12.7 million. Um, and that also came in uh, about a million and a half under what we <coughs> budgeted. And then for 2021, we have budgeted about 14.3 million uh, in expenses. <coughs> as far as our community involvement for last year, obviously with COVID, there was very little of it. Um, and we are really disappointed because we, we spend a lot of time uh, at the, uh, all of the local schools uh, attending uh, career days or, or going in to talk about water. Um, so we really missed that this year. We were able, however, to do a, a couple of Zoom uh, classes or participate in a few Zoom classes and, and we're able to get some, a message out uh, through that avenue. Uh, our uh, team did uh, participate in Christmas in the park and as well as the uh, trunk or treat at the uh, Freeman Lake Park, which was uh, obviously a very well attended program and our staff to, staff really uh, loved participating in that. Uh, but we also started a new program this year called Read With Us. And this is where our, uh, one of our employees will read a child's book about water uh, on video. And then we've uh, taken the video and shared it with the local schools and then it gives them something that they can share with uh, the class, either in the class or through the Zoom teachings that they're doing. And then as far as uh, our, uh, you know, I always like to talk about the accomplishments that uh, occurred throughout the year. Um, our uh, water treatment plant in White Mills was uh, selected as the uh, plant of the year uh, for the uh, KWWA, or Kentucky Water Operators Association. Uh, so we're very proud of our team there and the work that they do uh, to earn that award. Uh, we had uh, a couple employees who obtained their 4A treatment license, which is the highest uh, uh, classification that the state division of water uh, issues. And uh, we probably would have had a couple more if it wasn't for COVID because some of the testing dates were, were canceled. And then we have one employee who earned the lab uh, technician certification through the state as well. Our, uh, both of our treatment facilities uh, obtained their 2019, uh, for 2019 they obtained the, uh, obtained the AWOP certification, which is an area-wide optimization program. And this is a program that the state puts out that just uh, sets goals that are more stringent than the uh, uh, EPA the, and the, uh, the regulations. 
And uh, I can say that our White Mills facility has met this, has received this certification since the inception of the program several years ago. Uh, our distribution system also received uh, an AWOP award from the Division of Water. And uh, this program for, the, for the distribution systems is a fairly young program, but it's the first year that we participated. And so we were proud of uh, receiving that as well. And then uh, last but not least, I'd like to point out that Kelly Lee, our executive administrator, uh, received the outstanding uh, customer service award through the Kentucky, Tennessee American Water Works Association. So we're uh, very proud of her accomplishments and uh, uh, proud to have her uh, as one of our team members. So that is, uh, completes the uh, presentation. I'll certainly entertain any questions. Mr. Yurich, I just a uh, question about usage. How did COVID affect usage? Uh, well, I think, again, with the uh, facilities that were shut down, uh, the industrial, there were several industrial uh, in industries or industrial facilities that were shut down for a period of time. Of course, we lost all the sales from uh, you know, those facilities. There are several commercial uh, businesses that have been closed. Some of them still remain closed. So there was a lot of water loss that, or I don't say loss, but a lot of revenue that we lost because we didn't have uh, water sales. And that was equivalent to about the 1.3 million in sales that we lost. And we did see an uptick in um, usage for residential because obviously <coughs> more people were at home. But again, that was very minor compared to the losses we've seen with the industry. Yeah. Thank you. John, I didn't hear. Uh, what was the estimated cost of a new building out uh, on Ring Road? The construction cost is $8 million. $8 million. Yes, sir. I don't know that you were the best. <laughs> you were pretty <laughs> good. <laughs> I'll take that. Yeah, pretty good. Sean, I don't think ever darkened my door at North Harden, and I was a disciplinary assistant principal. <laughs> so he was good at it. He hid well. <laughs> He's a great parent. I can testify to that. His Thank children you. were at Lakewood. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Thank you. We appreciate the great job. Congratulations on your promotion. Thank you. Thank you all. Anything you want to add, Brother Bell? You're good. <coughs> Glad to have you. All right. We'll move on to department and office reports. So first up, uh, we have the Planning and Development Commission, Mr. Adam King. Good afternoon. Good. I've got the January and February reports from the Planning Commission. Uh, first off, Planning Commission, uh, no hearings over the two-month span. Uh, only item to report would be we did approve a refund request for the Hardin County Fair Board. Uh, that was for their zone change and also their billboard application. Uh, I'll go over a couple items that went before the Board of Adjustment. First up, uh, these are the, uh, the Martins. This is near the corner of Needham Road and Laurel Ridge Road. It's a 17-acre site, and we approved them for what we call a permanent accessory dwelling. Uh, so the garage there on the top left of your screen has about a 1,300-square-foot apartment within it, and then they are also proposing to construct a 2,300-square-foot brick home. Uh, so that was the 35th permanent accessory dwelling we've approved since 2009 when we adopted the new zoning ordinance. Uh, and this would be the 36th permanent accessory dwelling we've approved. Uh, so this is uh, the Purdles. This is on 12 Point Buck Boulevard. Uh, that's a Hardin County Water District number two water tank there, uh, just off 1600. And they have a barn that has a 1100 square foot apartment in it. And then they're building the new home there, a 4000 square foot home uh, on the same piece of property. Uh, this is in Franklin Crossroads, so it's Tim and Leah Loden. They're doing business as Country Crossroad Investments. We're on Kentucky 86, and they received a conditional use permit. This is a commercial lot uh, that just has a single wide manufactured home on it, and they've been approved to do a little 12 car car lot there. Uh, they were approved for three years initially, uh, so that should be under construction fairly soon. Uh, lastly, this is the Gray family. We're out on Meeting Creek Road, and they received a variance from the front building setback line. 
uh, to put on a covered porch on the house they're remodeling there, and then they also built a pole barn. Uh, you can tell from the topo, um, this, this portion of Meeting Creek Road at least runs along the ridge top. We've got some extreme topography there. So where the home and the barn are, about the only flat spot. Uh, looking at the various land use applications over January and February, uh, we did eight conditional use permits, four zone change requests, 12 subdivision plats were submitted, and then four variances. Looking at plats and lots, uh, we've recorded eight plats this year. That's slightly down from 12 at this time in 2020. Uh, looking at the number of lots on those plats, uh, 19 new lots this year. And again, that's also down from 2020 when we were at 25 at this time. Uh, building permits. So building permits, we've done 59 permits uh, so far this year. Uh, You'll notice there February only 16. I think with the snow and ice that knocked out an, at least an entire week. So I think that's part of the reason for the numbers being down. Uh, building permits this time last year we were at 70. Electrical permits uh, 140 through January and February. That's also down uh, 156 in 2020. Single family dwelling construction. You'll notice January started really strong. Uh, but we've done 14 total for the year. Uh, the map there is on the right. Um, it's a little deceiving because some of the dots stack on top of each other. But the, the two uh, most prevalent subdivisions so far, uh, McLean Manor, that's out at Brock Road in 1600. We've done three new homes. And then Whistling Oaks, that's down near Glendale off Mud Splash Road. Uh, three new homes there as well. And finally, inspections, um, 234 final inspections, uh, 40 footer inspections, uh, and then 72 rough inspections for David on the electrical side. That's all I've got. I'm happy to answer any questions you all have. Anyone have any questions or concerns for Ed? Thank you all. Thank you. Appreciate the good work. Next, we have the Hardin County Engineering Department, Mr. Charlie Allen. Right. Engineering has been very busy since I talked to you guys last. A lot of it you won't actually find here today in this document, but we've been busy with a lot of activity, so I'll cover what we've got here today. Uh, erosion control and prevention, that's uh, always one of our biggest items that we, uh, we do every, every single day, really. Uh, we'll talk about some public concerns, uh, our 911 addressing, and then a couple special projects I'd like to give you an update on today. It's pretty interesting. So for uh, January and February, we did 334 total site inspections, erosion control inspections. We had four notice of violations and zero stop work orders. As you can look at uh, inspections for January, we, we had several, 233. February looks like it's low, and obviously we had terrible weather with the ice and, and the snow. So, and, and in January, we were trying to catch up from some personnel changes at the end of the year. So we really worked hard in January to get as many as we could and catch up on some of that stuff. Uh, February, we did the best we could based on the weather. Notice of violations and stop work orders. In January, again, we had, we had three violations only one in February and most of these are ironically they're not really it's not really erosion issues it's more garbage and construction debris that we find a lot of times just uh, contractors are piling that stuff out uh, in front of the houses and leaving them there for a long time so we have to address that to keep it from blowing all over the place and getting into our streams as well so that's a it's an issue uh, annual inspections total inspections last year I, I told y'all this last time but 1224 what we did in 2020. This year to date, we're at 334, so we're, you know, we're on pace to have another good year of inspections. 1224 last year was about what they've been doing on average the last several years, it looks like. Stop work orders there again. You can see we're at four so far for this year. Public concerns, uh, it's always drainage is always the, the big thing. And in, in January, that was a, a big concern. Erosion concerns, we deal with some floodplain permitting. We've had a few, a couple of those where uh, some homeowners have asked to cross a stream or even a, with a floodplain involved, so we've had to deal with that. 
uh, lots of new construction and then occasionally some sinkholes we deal with. Public uh, response, we've had, in January we had uh, five complaints, zero in February, so that was good. <laughs> as far as that, I didn't have any phone calls at all dealing with any kind of public concern or complaint. In January we dealt with uh, all of those, we addressed them and, and closed those issues. 911, again we had uh, 11 new addresses in, in January, 10 in February. 21 total. You can see the breakdown. Looks like it was 18 of those were single family or a house, single family home, and mobile homes, two, and then one commercial address. So let's get into a little more interesting stuff here. <laughs> yeah, this stuff I like. But uh, a couple special projects. One to, uh, is the Miller Road Bridge uh, and then Bewley Hollow Road, uh, a project we've got there. So the Miller Road Bridge is the one uh, is a project that we just actually had a uh, the opening for the bid opening on February the 12th. That just happened to be the week of the ice storm, so we did have some hurdles that we had to navigate through with that for that bid opening. This is the the bridge that's actually south of the BG Parkway. The best overall bid was Todd Johnson Contracting, around $180,000 was the total bid for that. It is a 90-day contract, and uh, the road will be closed during that time, so there will be a uh, public notice put out for that when we get ready to do that. There will be some road closed signs, barricades, and all that up, of course, and signage for detours. The new bridge is going to be 20 feet wide, 36 feet long. The next project is interesting to me because I came from a background of uh, safety, crash uh, safety at uh, Kentucky Transportation Cabinet. So. This project came to my attention, Bewley Hollow at Ridgestone Drive. Um, I heard that there was a significant crash issue there, so I started looking into the data. Looks like in five years there were a total of 20 crashes right in that one little stretch around the curve there at Ridgestone Drive. And when I looked a little further, I realized that 19 of those crashes were single vehicle run off the road. They weren't rear end crashes, they weren't side swipes, it was a car just was running off the road. I looked a little further and it looked like it, they were all, 17 of those were actually on wet and wet conditions. So as we looked into that more, I, I talked to some partners that we have in the transportation cabinet in Frankfurt and sent them this proposal for a project and it just so happens that that curve was high on the list of potential of a project that needed high friction surface treatment. So we were able to work with them uh, get funding through FHWA and through the HSIP section there in Frankfurt Con Transportation Cabinet. They're going to fund 90% of that project cost, which is a, approximately a $100,000 project. They're going to fund $90,000, so we only have to pay $10,000. Uh, these kind of treatments, uh, you've seen them probably here in Hardin County before. There's one on Younger's Creek in a curve there. There's one on the ramp as you're going east on the uh, WK Parkway to the northbound ramp to I-65. This uh, kind of treatment is really good as far as keeping to keep vehicles on the road in a curve like, like we're dealing with here. So that's a project that is moving forward. It does have an April letting. The Kentucky Transportation Cabinet handles all of that for us. They'll do the inspections. They're handling the project completely. So it's a really, it's a big win for Hardin County, I think. Then right there with that project is a second phase and engineers right now uh, are studying, we're studying this curve to see if uh, the people coming out of that subdivision on Ridgestone, if potentially there are some other issues there dealing with site distance. I know it, it looks like there's an issue, but we want to make sure the data, whether it supports it or not, if it does, the engine, they will determine if it does, and we possibly will <coughs> cut back some trees, lay back the slope in that curve, and improve the site distance. And again, if it gets approved, that could be funded with these same federal dollars uh, and then we would only have to do a 10% match. So again, but we want to make sure that is a warranted project first. Does anybody have any questions about any of that? That's all I have. The treatment on that, does it just rough it up or what does it, what does it do? Does yeah, it's a, the treatment, the, the magic in the treatment is a bauxite, it's a type of rock that has high, highly abrasive. So yeah, it keeps, it helps to keep the, the car tires on the road. High friction is what it is, so, but it's in the aggregate mainly. It is a real thin, it's almost like a chip seal. It's a specialized contractor that has to do this. It's a specialized aggregate that gets shipped in here from, I think it comes from out of state actually, Pennsylvania, I believe. 
And so and that, the way it's uh, applied is sort of like chip sealing, sort of, but it is a uh, uh, more tightly bound product when it's done. Mr. Adam, I don't have a I don't have a question, but I have a big thank you. That's been a concern for quite a while, and I really appreciate your attention to it. You're welcome. Yeah. Anyone else? else? Thanks, Charlie. Appreciate the great work. You hit the ground running. Next, the Hardin County Road Department, Mr. Dwight Morgan. Good afternoon, Judge. Good afternoon, members of Fiscal Court. I'm here to uh, give you my January and February report. Our encroachment permits were down, but our revenue is up. That's always a good thing. <laughs> uh, road signs, we continue to have uh, people that like to uh, uh, borrow our road signs. They don't bring them back, so we have to put up new ones from quite often. So uh, we're up about a third in, in our road signs. So repair, uh, we're down some on that. Uh, probably more more or less due to the weather and, and uh, our sign person was probably had other responsibilities. Other, uh, that was up. Uh, we did do a lot of straightening up signs. We had some signs that was, uh, many signs that are leaning. So uh, on some of our rainy days uh, that we can't do other things. Uh, we sent our crews out and uh, uh, they'll straighten up our signs and get those those back up right. Uh, daily activities for the last couple of months, uh, pothole patching, uh, as you saw in the paper this week, uh, uh, we've done a lot of that. We've used a lot of cold mic. Uh, our mow trim machine is kind of set, set uh, idle for several weeks here due to the weather. Uh, tree trimming and uh, brush removal, uh, we've, we've done quite a bit on, on that. Uh, you probably saw that in your packet. We had a lot of roads that we did a lot of work on. Uh, tile replacements, uh, we're, we're kind of busy doing that at the present time, trying to get some roads ready uh, for some resurfacing. Other than that, that's uh, really really all I've got. Uh, I do want to take, take a moment, Judge, and just thank uh, some people. Uh, Domino's Pizza uh, here in Elizabethtown uh, donated some pizza for our guys uh, during one of our snow events. I'd just like to say thank you to them and uh, Montana Mike's the coffee house down at Glendale. Uh, they were uh, very kind to send us some coffee, coffee cups. Uh, that's always a nice gesture of people just thinking about you. Uh, we had a resident on Sycamore Trace. Uh, I was out there. I just ran out of salt and stopped. A uh, lady ran out. I don't even know what her name was, and I'm so sorry, but I just want to thank her. She made some homemade fudge, and golly, was it good. <laughs> how, long but, did you stay, how long did you stay there eating it? Well, I, I did take it back, and I did share it with the good. guys, but it was kind of hard, we all tell you, but you know, it was good. Uh, I do want to thank Kenneth Heiser uh, for coming out. We did, through the uh, several events that we had, we were thankful. Uh, we were we basically got ourselves out when we got in trouble for the most part, but uh, I had to have a little extra help one night. It's all it always happens on Friday nights. So, you know, you're ready to go home for the weekend. There you go. Uh, we were kind of we all of us were tired, uh, but one of our trucks got hung up, and uh, so I I got a good friend. And all I did was uh, just made that telephone call. He came with the tractor, so saved the county probably fifteen hundred dollars on tow bill. So I just want to take uh, another opportunity to thank Kenneth Heiser and Donna both for uh, uh, sharing their services. They were at Owensboro that, that afternoon, and they were on their way back whenever I called him. And, you know, a couple hours later, he's out, and he's, he's got us pulled out. And, and uh, so it's just people like, like that in Hardin County. It really makes you feel good. Uh, with some of the negative, uh, there's always, you know, you, you, hear, you hear a little bit of that, but you know with all the calls you didn't get, that there's a lot of folks out there that really appreciate what you do. Uh, I do want to take this time to thank Daniel. Daniel London, uh, 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 he, he spent some time in, in the truck, Jenny. Mm. So is he clear? <laughs> I don't know. So hey, you tell you know me. What? Hey, so that's on him, not me. 
<laughs> I was already sitting here thinking I was glad you finally are covered to be behind the wheel of the truck. <laughs> yeah. So uh, anyway, uh, Daniel did relieve me, and I got I got my lunch one day. He did a great job. He, he's a you know he comes. You didn't need to hear that, did you, Jenny? <laughs> so anyway, uh, Daniel, thank you uh, for the many times that you came and checked on us. Uh, the guys, I can tell you, they really appreciate everything that you do and, and just uh, uh, pitching in and, and uh, you know, just, just checking on them. That, that means a lot. Judge Barry, thank you so much for the telephone calls. Appreciate the uh, support uh, that you've given us uh, there at the road department. But a uh, uh, few weeks, hey, it's all gone. Hey, we've got 70 degree weather. It's not it's all that cold weather not coming back. So that's all I have, Judge. Any questions? Don't have a question, but I have a message for you, Mr. Morgan. <laughs> okay, sir. Uh, one of my constituents tried to uh, wave at the uh, road department and, and give them a thanks, but that person wanted me to personally uh, or publicly uh, tell you how much uh, she appreciated. She was coming out of her, uh, her subdivision when the ice and the snow was accumulating, and she was concerned about hitting Beulah Hall Road. And, and about that time, she said she looks up and here comes the county road truck, and she fell in behind it and followed it all the way to work. So she wanted to personally say thank you. That's great. Yes, thank, thank you, Dwight. You well, did a great job. Yeah, you did. Sometimes. You were very responsive when we called you about anything. You got right on it, and we appreciate it. Well, we have a we have a great staff. Uh, I couldn't, you know, I've got a great great group of guys, and they do they work hard for you. I can tell you that. Uh, they love your county, and they they care about uh, what they do, and and uh, uh, they're just a just a great great group of people to be around every day. So we certainly appreciate the good job uh, by all of you, and with the news that you shared with uh, us about Daniel, you might find yourself having him as a full time employee <laughs> <laughs> in your staff. We hope he was good. <laughs> all right, thank you. Be careful what you ask for. Okay. <laughs> Might have you. All right, is, is we'll move to CDL? item four, ordinances, agreements, resolutions. I'm sorry. Has Daniel got a CDL? Don't answer that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's some questions you just don't ask. Or you don't want to ask <laughs> the recorders are on. <laughs> All right, resolution number 2021-040, approving a bid for Miller Road uh, bridge replacement. This was uh, referenced earlier by Mr. Allen in his presentation. Uh, this came before the Public Works Committee also. Motion to approve. Second. Best bid. Motion by Mr. Thompson, second by Ms. Williams. <coughs> Any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Donnelly? King? Yes. Judge Berry? Yes. Easter? Yes. Doug Goodman? Yes. Williams? Yes. Clem? Yes. Wiseman? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Ronnie Goodman? Yes. Item 4B is resolution number 2021-039. It's approving a bid for online auction services uh, for Hardin County. Uh, this will be done by Lewis Auction Company. They were the best bid, and this also came before the Public Works uh, Committee. Mr. Thompson, anything you'd like to add? The best bid, and uh, I would recommend that. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Mr. Thompson, second by Mr. Wiseman. Any discussion on this item? Hearing none, Ms. Donnelly. Judge Barry? Yes. Easter? Yes. Doug Goodman? Yes. Williams? Yes. Clem? Yes. Wiseman? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Ronnie Goodman? Yes. King? Yes. And item 4C is resolution number 2021-038. It's approving the bid for uh, Fort Knox and Hardin County Janitorial Services. This is another one of the intergovernmental services agreements that uh, Mr. London has been working on for us. Uh, it's been discussed uh, several times at the Resources Community Support Committee. Ms. Williams, anything you'd like to add? It has, and thank you, Daniel, for another great contract there and uh, helping us out. So I do move that we approve that. Second. A motion by Ms. Williams, second by Mr. Clem. Any discussion on this item? <coughs> Hearing none, Ms. Donnelly. Easter? Yes. Doug Goodman? Yes. Williams? Yes. Clem? Yes. Wiseman? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Ronnie Goodman? Yes. King? Yes. Judge Berry? Yes. 
We'll go with magistrate's comments now, and we'll start with Mr. Wiseman. Judge, uh, Solid Waste will have a meeting next Monday, the 15th, at 3.30 in the room across the hall. That's on the third floor. Everybody's invited. Mr. Thompson. I have nothing today, thank you. Uh, Mr. Ronnie Goodman. Mr. King. Judge, I don't have anything, mm -hmm. thank you. Right. Mr. Easter. I don't have anything, Judge. Mr. Doug Gooden. I have no items, Judge. Ms. Williams. Just a reminder, the Resources Committee will meet next uh, uh, Tuesday, March 16th at 3 p.m. in the room across the hall. Everybody's invited. And Mr. Clem. I uh, just want to extend best wishes to Senator Perry and uh, wishing him a speedy recovery. And uh, as usual, uh, please don't text and drive and don't drink and drive. All right, uh, next item was closed session that we don't have a need for any longer today. Uh, so we'll move on to the last item, which is the consent agenda, was items that were included in your electronic packet. Are there any corrections that need to be made? Move to approve. Second. Motion by Mr. Doug Goodman, second by Mr. King. The approve is presented. Any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Dolly? Doug Goodman? Yes. Williams? Yes. Clem? Yes. Wiseman? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Ronnie Goodman? Yes. King? Yes. Judge Barry? Yes. Easter? Yes. Is there anything else that needs to come before us before we adjourn? If not, I'd remind everybody that our next meeting of Hardin County Fiscal Court is on March 23rd, Tuesday afternoon, 3.30, here in the courtroom. Hearing nothing else, motion will be in order for us to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Motion by Mr. Thompson, second by Mr. King. If there's no objection, hearing none, we stand adjourned.